I'd like to tell you a story about Amy. Amy was a young man, mom of four and a student working on her biomedical engineering degree who one day, out of the blue, received a call from her town's child and family welfare department. It seems that someone answering to Amy's name and description had given birth to a premature baby girl and had tested positive for illegal drug use and had abruptly fled the hospital, leaving her infant and a $10,000 bill behind. So Child and Family Welfare was preparing to submit paperwork, declaring Amy an unfit mom and putting her four kids into state custody. But of course, Amy was not the mother of the newborn infant. The baby belonged to a woman who'd stolen Amy's driver's license from her car two months before. Someone had stolen my identity and had taken over my life, Amy lamented. You know, the internet is full of identity theft stories similar to Amy's. Stories highlighting the havoc we endure when our identities are threatened. Because we treasure our identities. They are vital descriptors of our lives, personifying our character, our beliefs, and all the values we hold dear. But did you know that identity theft is nothing new to our 21st century culture? Today's gospel account of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness is a story about Satan threatening Jesus with identity theft, about Satan's attempt to take over Jesus' life. And it is a story that we can gain hope from when temptations threaten to take over our lives. Now it all began when Jesus' true identity had been boldly proclaimed at his baptism. As the heavens had opened, the spirit had alighted as a dove, and God had announced, this is my beloved son in whom I am very well pleased. But then immediately after his baptism, Immediately, today's gospel tells us that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where, for, where after 40 days of isolation, fasting, and physical weakness, he was confronted by Satan, who threatened to steal that newly proclaimed baptismal identity. If you are the Son of God, turn those stones into bread. If you are the Son of God, go to the temple of High Point and jump off it. The angels will take care of you. If you are the Son of God, worship me and you can have it all and rule the world right now. Now attacking Jesus with these tempting offers, Satan was giving him an appealing shortcut for living out his newly proclaimed baptismal identity, an easy way out, a chance to grab onto a kingly crown of worldly power and avoid the suffering servant's cross that Jesus, that God had planned for him. Now don't we just kind of have to wonder if Jesus in his humanness had a fleeting thought of, hey, yeah, why not beginning, begin ruling now? What could be so wrong with that? Why wait and suffer? After all, besides being true God, Jesus was 100% human. God had put no protective bubble around him. Jesus was as vulnerable and as utterly depleted from spending 40 days, agonizing days in the wilderness as we would be. My friends, you know, Satan's offer must have been very tempting. But Jesus remained faithful to his God-given identity. He was determined to do his Father's will. He knew that as God's son, he was called to be a suffering servant king, 
not the powerful worldly king that Satan was offering. So rather than compromising his identity for the sake of all humanity, Jesus accomplished what Adam failed to do in creation's garden and what the Israelites couldn't do in 40 years of wandering around the wilderness. Jesus gave his allegiance and his worship only to God. Away from me, Satan, Jesus proclaimed. So it's fitting that each year the account of Jesus' wilderness temptation is read on this day, the first Sunday of Lent. Whether the account is from Matthew, Mark, or Luke, we always begin our 40-day Lenten journey to the cross by meditating on the relevancy of Jesus' wilderness temptation to the hunger, exhaustion, loneliness, and fear that we are still experiencing in the wilderness of our world today. A wilderness in which we, you and I, are so often tempted to follow the quick and easy route and to set our hearts on the things of this world as we struggle, we struggle with temptations like pride, envy, greed, apathy, bitterness, prejudice, and this all the ways that we put ourselves first before we worship and serve our great God. But my friends, believe it or not, today's sermon is not one of doom and gloom. Today's lesson offers us good news because in being true to his identity as God's suffering servant son, Jesus was strong for us. So in times of our giving into temptation, and you know, those times do come, don't they? Jesus' faithfulness in his journey to the cross assures us of God's forgiving grace. And what's more, when those temptations do come our way, we can have encouragement and hope to stay strong by following the example of Jesus in our lesson today. When temptations come, we can stay strong by remembering that we have a Savior who knows what it's like to suffer temptation, who understands exactly what we're going through, who's been there, who's got our backs when we face tough times, and who will always, always stick by us no matter what. When temptations come, we can stay strong by accessing the same armor of God that Jesus did, God's word. Now, doesn't it seem fitting that if Jesus found strength in fighting temptation with the power of Scripture, that we, too, can find safety in the promises of God's word? And wouldn't our 40-day Lenten journey be a good time to begin some new habits? Maybe even writing down and memorizing some Scripture verses so when temptations threaten, we'll be ready with the armor that God offers us? Wouldn't our Lenten journey be a good time to renew our commitment to personal Bible study, to family devotions, to daily prayer? And if you haven't already picked up one of these little Lenten devotionals that are in the narthex, be sure and do so as you leave today. In a time when the world says, run faster and do more, wouldn't the next 40 days be a good time to slow down a bit and follow God's words on our Lenten banner today. Be still and know that I am God. But perhaps most important of all, most important of all when temptations come, we can stay strong knowing that no matter what, our baptismal identities, our identities as children of God can never ever be stolen from us. We have the assurance that in our baptisms, our foreheads were marked with the cross of Christ forever, just like little Harper's was in our 10 o'clock service a little while ago. And though in those times when we feel inadequate, 
vulnerable, weak, or unworthy, we can be confident, as Dolly read a little while ago, that through the obedience and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what we do, we are loved, respected, and valued as children of God. So perhaps our 40-day Lenten journey would be a good time to begin daily renewing our baptismal vows, to begin each day thanking God for our baptism, to dip our hands in the baptismal font each time we come here to the table, much like the children did just a little while ago, and to reclaim our identities as children of God each time we make the sign of the cross in the name of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The story is told of Martin Luther when he was asked how he overcame temptation, he would reply, well, when Satan comes knocking upon the door of my heart and asks, who lives there? My dear Lord Jesus goes to the door and says, Martin Luther used to live here, but he has moved out. Now I live here. So this morning, my Trinity friends, with our dear Lord Jesus living in our hearts, we are invited to begin our Lenten journey celebrating our secure identities as treasured and priceless children of God, being assured that whenever we face temptation, we have the power of God's word right at our fingertips and being confident that no matter what, no matter what, our faithlessness will always, always be covered by Jesus' ever-loving faithfulness and grace-filled forgiveness. Amen.